This is, this is a big piece for everybody that when you don't have it, you're yearning for it. So you're blocking it. Yeah. And then somehow you manage to soothe yourself enough that through the crack of least resistance, and it's often for most of you, a crack, <laughs> you allow it to flow. And then you began using your rational mind to reason from a position of usually of undeservability that it's not going to last. In other words, it's, it's because there was not yet a sustaining expectation of things to continue to work out well for you. In other words, your belief must, you must have had enough belief for it to sort of kind of happen yeah. enough belief for it to happen for a little while, but not enough belief to really sustain it. And there's something sort of irrational about that because, because you would think that if it's happening, that it would give you more reason to expect it to happen. But that is the pitfall of the conditional love that so many of you are living. In other words, it's that if it could be here, it could be gone. Those conditions, you're using the conditions to work against yourself. It will not be until you find that place where you just know your rightness, your goodness, your blessedness, your deservability that you will be able to sustain this energy stream that you so much want. The point that we want to make back to you is, do you see how humans can take even the best of conditions and use them against themselves by, by looking at something that to most feels so absurd and using it against yourself. So the question is, why do I do that? Why, why would I not be advocating for my benefit? Why would I not be emphasizing for my benefit? And the reason is because you are in a physical world where so many are making so many comparisons. You live in a very conditionally oriented world and it isn't working out very well for any of you. And when you are masterful as you are, when you, when you begin to catch the spirit of what your true potential is, you just can't do that in a conditional world. You have to break out of that. You have to massage your thoughts into a way that you feel the energy. In other words, it, you're in the same way that it, a sculptor learns to manage the clay, learns the material in which they are working, uh, learns the best material to work with and under the conditions that the best material is moldable and pliable. You are learning to do that with energy and the way that's what we've been talking about all day long here today. And the way you learn to mold the energy is by accepting the naturalness of your desires and then find a way to make your desire feel possible to make your desire feel good to me. In other words, you cannot, offer a statement to live my dream in the way that I want to now is not possible. Do you feel the, the yeah. resistance that you are adding to that equation? Yeah. And so you just got to stop doing that. You've got to warm that up. Yeah. And I, it feels like when you have big dreams, when you have specialized yeah. dreams that, that then but that then it requires more focus or then it is more difficult, but it is not. It is as easy to create a castle as a, as a button. button. Start there by saying, when I had nothing, I found it. <laughs> and now I have so much more, I'm having a hard time finding it. So you've got to ask yourself, what is the difference? When you had nothing, when you had nothing and you were reaching for everything. Yeah. There was no resistance. Yeah. But when you feel like you have everything that you are now going to lose, now yeah. there's resistance. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yes. And I feel guilty that I don't make full use of my resources that I have. Well, guilty is the way you feel when you think a thought that your inner being doesn't think. That's true. Let's get this straight. Let's <laughs> Let, let's get this straight. Let's talk about what's really happening. Because when you say, when any of you say, I feel guilty, you may, you mean when you say that I should be doing something different, right? The only thing that you should be doing different is thinking the way your inner being thinks about what you're doing. Yeah. Do you hear that? 
Yeah. Your inner being doesn't think you should be doing something different. Mm -hmm. Your inner being doesn't think that you should be making better use of resources. It's your beating up on yourself that's making you feel bad, not the fact that you're not utilizing your resources better. Is that clear? Do you understand? In other words, you're misunderstanding your guidance system. Your guidance is, it, it, it is saying one simple thing. That's not the way we see it. That's not the way we see it. Yeah. When you feel negative emotion, that's what we want. Those are the words we want you to hear. That's yeah. not the way we see it. When you say, I'm not good enough, it feels bad. That's not the way we see it. Yeah. When you say, I'm too old and you feel bad, that's not the way we see it. Yeah. When you say, I can't get there from here that, and you feel bad, that's not the way we see it. Yeah. And that's all that bad feeling means. It means you are shooting yourself in the foot right now with this bogus thought that is not the way we see it. That's and true. the way we see it matters because we're standing over here in your that's vortex true. with all your stuff. We're That's over true. here where it all is. We know how to get it to you. We know the path of least resistance to get it to you. That's and true. that feeling is just your indication that you're right now got your shield up and you're not letting it in. End of story. That's all. It doesn't mean you should have done something different. It doesn't mean that there's some better thing that you should have been doing. It doesn't mean you've missed your opportunity. It just means right now in this moment, while this emotion feels bad right now, you're doing it right now. It wasn't that you got too old over a period of time. It wasn't that you missed the opportunity in some way. Right now you're doing it right now in this moment of emotion. Right now you're doing it right now. Yeah. You see, have you ever had friends who, who got dirt on you? Meaning, meaning they, they had you on something, something, something that you did that you shouldn't have done and they never let you forget it. It just comes up over and over. You still owe me. Remember, you still owe me, they say. We're being playful. Maybe Esther watches too many movies. But it seems that that's the way it is in your environment a lot. And what we want you to understand is that the source within you isn't harboring anything about anything that you've ever done before. It's all real time. When you feel negative emotion, it's about what you're doing right now, right now, right now, right now. When you could do something different. That matters, don't you think? This negative emotion means I could make a better choice right now. So if you've got a lot of momentum on it, like we can see how you could be standing at a place outside of that structure and using the structure itself to beat yourself up. Yeah. But if you have decided that you're not facing reality, it isn't about some statistical documentary. It's about something entirely different. It's about you feeling good, period. It's about you feeling good then you can stand right now and find some way to cause, to soothe yourself, to soothe yourself. You have to find a way to soothe yourself. Effort without alignment doesn't yield you happiness. Yeah. It just yields you medals <laughs> and accolades from other people. It doesn't yield you alignment and alignment is what happiness is. This steady stream of realization is what you're reaching for. It's a steady stream of realizing who I am now, who I am now, who I am now, who I am now. Rather than trying so hard to sort out behavior, just for a little while, sort out feelings.